Welcome to Time Out with Twin Possible. Hi, and thank you for taking Time Out with Twin Possible. Today we're going to talk about a subject that's very dear to my heart. And because I suffered through it, I've suffered through a lot of things, but I will tell you one of the most detrimental things that happens in a child's life and happened in my life is bullying. And um, I know Julia Michaels came out saying she was bullied. God bless her. All right? You know why I say that? Because more people have to come out and say these things. Because we look at celebrities and we think they have these perfect lives and were popular in school. We just make these assumptions. They were popular in school. They were cheerleading captain, head of the football team. They were all just, from the start, just dropped dead gorgeous and wonderful and every their lives were just peachy keen. And we don't always know what's behind the scenes before they hit the big time. And so it's really good that somebody like Jillian came out and said, hey, I wasn't perfect. My life wasn't perfect. Um, you know, things happened to me too. And bravo for her. And I'm candid, so I'll talk about anything, but it really still to this day, almost 35 years old, and still to this day, I get choked up just thinking about it because it's like I'm back in junior high school again. Junior high until like almost 12th grade as a senior was an absolute nightmare. It started around 12 years old. I remember I used to keep a diary, and I kept a diary my whole life, really. And I wrote in there, I'm pretty, I'm funny, I'm smart. And re looking back and reading that now makes me so sad because then if you flipped to like maybe eight months later when I was 13, I hate myself, I want to die, I'm so ugly, I'm hideous, I'm disgusting. Okay, so what happened in that amount of time that did that? I will tell you, I got beaten down. There was this innocent little girl who thought she was good of herself, who had parents that didn't you know, raise her up in any way, but had her grandmother for the first 11 years of her life praising her and telling her good things, and that's probably what saved me, but then to have your diary go from that to that, it was just horrifying, and when you read the pages in between, you see what the problem was. All of a sudden, apparently, somehow, my looks changed, and remember, we had this thing called a slam book. Okay, and it was where you put like most popular and uh, funniest, blah, 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 all things about everybody and everybody's in it. And I was laughing with a friend and going, because I was at, at this time, 12 years old, I was kind of popular. And, and I wanted to see the book, and under ugliest, it said my name. And I couldn't believe it because I'm like, you know, I never looked it around at anybody and called them ugly, but I didn't know that I was that until. I saw that in the book, and I, I, that started things. Then, after the summer, I went to a new school, 13 years old, in, in eighth grade, and basically every day I was just told it over and over again, pounding into my head. And this one guy started the whole school chanting songs about me. They would ha make the bus an absolute nightmare for me, hack loogies into my hair, push me down the hall, throw my books down the stairs. Um, you know, say, oh, you, you're too big, you got no bazooms, and they try to grab me and say, there's nothing there, and, you know, it was just, I, I went through hell. I really, really went through hell. I can't even say the names, all the names that I was called, except that a lot of it was about being ugly, unattractive, gross, disgusting, hideous, you name it. Whatever word for gross you can think of, that's what I was called, and... And that's when I realized how disgusting I was. And if you read my journal, I, I wanted to die. I didn't want to live. But I was raised to believe that if you kill yourself, you're going to hell. So I just kept it inside, came home from school, would hide in my room, cry a little bit in private. And I dealt with it for years on my own. And then finally I told my mother, because I was at my breaking point, and I begged her to take me out of the school. And she wouldn't do it didn't care and you know what that's a problem in America today you know what parents need to step up and stop this abuse because I was literally getting hurt physically not just emotionally and psychologically but physically and even when I came home 
one of my family members hurt me physically, and because my parents were afraid of that person, they never did anything about it and let it go on. And I honestly just, there was no, <laughs> there's no wonder how I ended up in abusive relationships, thank God for my husband and my family now, but I mean, if you look back on all of it, this is all a result of being put down, put down, put down, put down. I went through hell from start to finish, all because I believed I was worth this much. Okay, so believing you're worth this much is going to attract guys who prey on you, and you know what? No matter what you end up looking like after the awkward face was over and guys were honking and telling me I was gorgeous and this that, and the other thing, not now, <laughs> not now. I'm talking about you know, 10, 15 years ago, uh, when I was like 18 or 19 it started, and I couldn't understand it. I'm like, what are these people? And I never ever believed it or enjoyed it. Should have for the years that it lasted, but. All right, I get an occasional honk or two. I'm not, who cares, I'm old. But anyway, you know what? It's not about that. It's like you got so much negative attention, you've beaten down so far that, you know what? The, the creeps come out of the woodwork. And people will look and be like, what is she doing with such a loser? But you don't know you're with a loser. You think you're with a winner because, God, at least he'll have me, you know? Somebody wants me. And, you, and, and they control you, manipulate you because you feel like that's what you deserve or that's just normal. That's what life is. That's who you, where you belong. And looking back now, I, you know, I never would put myself in that position. But I was so scarred, and still I have a low self-esteem a lot of the time because of that abuse. So what parents need to do is they need to take action. If your child shows any of the signs, depression, withdrawal, okay, spending a lot of time in their room with the door locked, things that make you suspicious that something go is going on. Don't just think it's the crazy teenage hormones or something, you know, or it's just like, oh, they had a bad day or they're in a bad mood, you know, oh, life is weird with teenagers and stuff. Don't. If your preteen or teenager is acting that way, question them. Find out because if they are getting bullied, they might be ashamed to admit it, but I'm telling you, many lives are taken by suicide because of this. And how I'm still here, I don't know because I had such a depressing life that really, honestly, all that kept me going was that thought of going to hell if I killed myself. So I'm glad that I had that thought. Um, and I really didn't want to die, but I didn't want to live being me. I just wanted to look and be like anybody and everybody else. So that was just my goal always, to just be beautiful and be like everybody else. But that doesn't solve all your problems either. So it's an underlying thing, and the scars that are left are hideous and, and impossible to fully remove. So you have to get involved in your child's life. If this ever happened to my children and I found out about it, I will pull them out of that school and if need be, I would homeschool them because that is abuse that never, ever, ever leaves their life. So if you see the signs, like I said, withdrawal, they start acting very different, they're not hanging out with their friends or they're just hanging out with one friend, they don't seem to want to go to school. I used to pretend I was very sick um, to get out of school. I, stick my finger down my throat if I had to show my mom, look, I vomited in the bathroom, or I have diarrhea, oh, I have such a bad thing, and of course, the thermometer on the light thing, okay? I used to do anything and everything. I was down at the nurse all the time because I was so nervous that I was making myself physically sick and just dying to go home, just dying not to be at school, and that is a sad way to live, so look at those signs. If your child's trying to get out of school, doesn't want to go, there's something deeper going on in there than just doesn't want to take the test or doesn't like Sally and Sally don't like him. No, it's not that. It, it can be something more than that and it's very, very important that we take notice and, 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 and really talk to our children about bullying and not to bully others, okay? Because we don't want our children to be bullied but we don't want them to be inflicting pain on others because it's just not a healthy thing to do because these bullies don't even realize down the line what they've even done because you know what I ran into one of the bullies the, the biggest bully actually and you know what a few years later he didn't know who I was and actually asked me out can you believe that all right well uh, all I can say is that it's a painful subject and it's very embarrassing for a child to admit to a parent but step in, get involved, okay? Don't go running down to the principal right away saying, oh God, but you know, this is going on with my little Billy, but you know what I mean? You can't just sit back and let it happen. If they're having a horrible experience on the bus, God help me, just drive them to school. 
if, if, if school is that bad that they're coming home um, crying, or then, then you have to step in. You have to talk to a principal. My husband says nowadays, oh, it's not the same way as when you were younger. They have, they, they, the teachers step. When, when I was getting grabbed and, and pushed, and the, the teachers just walked on by, really nobody ever stood up and helped me, and that was really sad. And maybe they do now, maybe they do step in more so, but a lot of things happen that are behind backs, you know what I'm saying? In the bus, in a, a crowded, loud bus, nobody's going to hear you in the back. And you know, inside the bathrooms. I mean, there's not always going to be somebody looking. You have to get involved. And there are celebrities and people out there who have been bullied, who have been tormented, and who, who know this pain. Don't feel like anybody's ever perfect. Tell, tell your children, they're beautiful. They're special. They need to hear it every day. Tell them you love them. They are wonderful in every single way, and you're proud of them. Because if I would have heard those things, maybe it wouldn't affect me so bad the bullying, but maybe now I'd be a little bit more secure and, and during my later years maybe I wouldn't, you know, maybe I wouldn't have suffered so much during my lifetime. But you need to do that because I never got that from my parents and parents have the greatest influence of all. And my mother at almost 35 still has an influence on me. I mean sometimes she'll call me chubby or something like that and then I'll say it doesn't matter and I'll go home and I'll, you know, she just, she's she can really still get to me after all these years. So don't think that you don't have an impact on your children because they say, I don't care what you think. They do care what you think more than you know. They care a lot. So think good things. You're proud of them. They're special. They're wonderful. They're smart. They're talented. They're gorgeous. They're, they're everything that's important in life. And gorgeous comes last. Looks are not what makes you. It's the person that makes you. But always let them know that they are beautiful inside and out no matter what because they need that. They need your support. And you have to look for those signs. You have to step in when need be, but do it very cautiously. You don't want to embarrass your child, especially nowadays. Kids can be so cruel, and you just just don't want to let them get abused. Like I said, it does not just go away. There is no on-off switch. The emotions, the pain, the scars, they still remain many years after. So just make sure you do that, and also make sure that they aren't a bully. Um, taking kids' money, um, getting into fights, getting pulled down to the principal's office every other day, you'll, you'll get word that your child's a bully and you really need to sit them down and tell them what can happen. I mean, look at Columbine. I mean, I'm not saying that bullying is the only reason, but uh, some people go insane, uh, you know, for whatever reasons, and sometimes this could be one of them, a big trigger. So, you know, most people don't do things like that, but there are some loose cannons, and some people do commit suicide, and that's a, that's the biggest shame in the world. Nobody should have to die, and nobody should have to feel sub, superior to anybody else. We're all equal in this world. We are all created in God's image, and nobody is better than anybody else. Nobody who's rich, famous, is any better than me, and nobody on the cover of Vogue is any better than you. Um, just, just always instill these things in your children. Look for the signs. Make sure that they're having a happy, healthy school life and environment around them at home and in school because it's so important in their development and self-esteem is so important. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you, Jillian, for sharing that and bringing this to me because it helped me open up and get my feelings out. And now I feel a lot better. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching.